Time now for the Sports Six Pack with Andrew Rogers. You know what time it is. It's time to send in those questions to at Herd at Sports. We've compiled them. I've sent them over to Sugar Shane. He's got them loaded up. But if you have a question, whether it's timely for today or if it fits, you know, the rest of this week, maybe in two weeks, whatever, we'll hold on to that question. Shane will get them loaded up and we'll get them answered right here on the Sports Six Pack. Shaner, kick us off. Question number one. Man, I was right into that beer. Did Creighton look like uh, the ninth best team in the country last night? They definitely didn't play their best basketball, but I think that sentence is a bit of an overreaction. Creighton just wasn't making their shots, and they didn't make them from behind the arc either. Meanwhile, the Tommies, they shot 42% from three, and some teams just shoot better. That's just how basketball works. Creighton also allowed more points than desired in the paint. Despite all that, they never lost sight of the end goal. And I think that's the biggest takeaway from this basketball game. With roughly 25% of the game left, Shireman took over. They got Shireman in the transfer portal for a reason, and he proved that against St. Thomas. Stepped up in a big way, gave the team momentum, hit back-to-back -back threes, it allowed for separation. I believe Creighton went on a 14-0 run. And then you also first forced defensive turnovers. Four of them, straight. Back-to-back -back dunks. There's more than people probably looked at in this game to be positive about. So to answer your question, no. They did not look like the ninth best team, but the ninth best team figured out how to win when they didn't perform well, and great teams do that. All right, well, I guess if they didn't look like the ninth best team, I'll just go right back to my beer. <laughs> Question number two. What was more premature, the firing of Frank Wright or the hiring of Jeff Saturday? <laughs> the hiring of Jeff Saturday was way more premature, but Frank Reich I don't think deserved to be fired either. And I'll tell you why in a sec. So Jeff Saturday last coached a high school team with a losing record. And I can't wrap my head around why people thought Frank Reich was the problem here. Think about what quarterbacks he had since he got the head coach job. He had Andrew Luck in 2018. That was him on his way out. Jacoby Brissett and Brian Hoyer, that tandem. Then you had Carson Wentz, which, yes, he was kind of advocating for. But then you had Matt Ryan and Sam Ellinger. And he still had a winning record. He went 40-33-1. He also had a 1-2 playoff record. You know who had the same record since 2018? Mike Tomlin. And Mike Tomlin's team was so much well more put together. I know that didn't really make a lot of sense when I just said that, but it was so much more put together than the Indianapolis coach. Somebody will snag up Frank Reich. He won't be a free agent long, and that will be one of the best moves that a team makes. I don't think Frank Reich should have, should have left. I, I think they made the wrong move. Question number three. And these are going down smooth. Followed up, uh, Jeff Saturday can get hired without any prior coaching experience at the biggest levels. Does that change your mind about Mickey Joseph? I wouldn't say it changes my mind about Mickey Joseph, but it just goes to show that owners or ADs in this case are going to make the choice no matter what. It's their team. Now, yes, in the college realm of things, it's, it's not Trev Albert's team, but he's going to make the choice of who he feels is best going to lead this program and lead it back to greatness. I'm a big resume guy, so in Saturday's case, I think someone was just holding a gun to the Colts owner's head and said, you have to hire this guy or you're gonna leave this earth. That made no sense to me. And even what Ursay what Ursay said, that, think about how that sounded there, uh, about Jeff Saturday and how he feels that Saturday not having any prior coaching experience is actually good in the NFL. Uh, not only are you backstabbing the rest of your staff by saying that, because there's some NFL caliber head coaches on that staff, plus around the league. They start with an interim tag, yes, but they hope for more out of Jeff Saturday 
for years to come. So in regards to the resume, I prefer somebody with head coaching experience to be Nebraska's next head coach, but I say it all the time, man, interims, they can make, they can make do and in big ways. Dabo Sweeney did it in Clemson. At all levels, we saw a Stanley Cup champion in St. Louis. We saw a Major League Baseball manager go to the World Series this year as an interim. Interim coaches will make that job their number one priority in life, right? They, they will fight so hard to get that head coaching job. So going back to this point, you asked if it changed my mind about Mickey Joseph. I would say no. Uh, I mean, in the Colts case, they may, they're making a joke of their season, so they might as well go all in on Jeff Saturday. The Huskers will never look to make a joke out of their season, as much as fans may probably sit back and say, well, this we're making a joke out of us because of the last, you know, six, seven years, whatever you want to say. Mickey Joseph can be a great coach, and I don't think Jeff Saturday and Mickey Joseph can be matched up in the same conversation. Question number four. If a movie was made of your life, what type of movie would it be, and who would play you? My movie would be a comedy. Okay. Because, I, you know, I'm just... I'm a very outgoing, uplifting, funny guy. Damon used all three of those terms to describe me just just yesterday. And uh, Chris Pratt would play me. Chris Pratt. Chris Pratt. I love Chris Pratt. He's so funny. So, funny thing about Chris Pratt, I don't know if you've seen his little interview that he did with, I think it's, is it Graham Norton? Is he the, the British comedy talk show host. Am I right when I say that? I think it's Graham Norton. So Chris Pratt learned magic tricks, like card tricks, and I know how to do card tricks too, and probably to the extent that Chris Pratt does. So yeah, I think that's a good comparison. And he likes Michelob Ultra. He did commercials with Michelob Ultra. I'm a Mick Ultra guy. And, and you probably would look good being chased by dinosaurs. The St. Louis beer. I don't need those looks, DB. It's a St. Louis beer. Actually, the best brewing plant around, A.B. So if, uh, if that question was asked for me, do you want to know what uh, my movie would be? What, your actor? My movie would be, it would be a miniseries. <laughs> Good one. Good one. I love it. Question number five. It's election day. Would you vote Justin Fields as the best quarterback of the 2020? Solidify it. One draft before you class. answer the before you even finish the question, I'm gonna buzz in early, like they try to do in Jeopardy. I'm gonna hammer my buzzer. Yes, he is the best quarterback in the 2021 draft class, no doubt, no doubt. He has the most potential. He's looked as better as he he looks as as good as he's ever been. And it's finally because the coaching staff knows how to use him. They, they're letting him run the football now. He needs to be like a Jalen Hurts type of quarterback. That's what they're going to let him do now. Finally, the Bears know how to use him. You look at the other quarterbacks in that draft class. Trevor Lawrence, I've said it from the very beginning. I think he's going to be a bust. He finally has a coach this year too, and he hasn't performed. He's still making the same blunders that he did last year. Zach Wilson, I mean, he just is so reckless with the football. Trey Lance hasn't had enough time, so it's unfair to make a case about him yet. Mac Jones has taken a step back since last year, and Davis Mills in Houston will not be Justin Fields. Justin Fields is the best quarterback in that class. There's no doubt. He's been a QB1, not only in the NFL over the last three weeks, but for fantasy managers as well. So take a look at Justin Fields right now, especially if you are looking at him for fantasy purposes. He will win you your fantasy league. Really? I would trade for him. I'm actually debating on trading Damian Pierce for him right now because I need a quarterback and I have running back depth. He did have a big game. DB in the peanut gallery saying Pierce had a big game. He had a great game. But Justin Fields could win me my fantasy league and I could suffice with James Conner and Raheem Mostert in that league. 
Question number six. All right, Andrew. All right, Andrew. Did, you got you got caught caught up on that burp again, Shane. I know. Uh, did you know Dusty Baker's first name isn't actually Dusty? <laughs> I, I didn't know that. I, it took me until the interview with the Astros players to really find out that Dusty's first name wasn't Dusty. <laughs> Swear to God, didn't know it. Do you know what his first name is? Dustin. Does, no, it's not Dustin. Yep, yep. We got two in here. Shane, come on. It starts with a J and ends in Ani. Really? Yep. Johnny Baker. Didn't know it. Did not know that until I saw that, that interview series. That's interesting. A lot of people have different names. Different names. Nicknames, right? You, do you know what Muhammad Ali's real name is? Oh, yeah. Come on. What is it? Well, it's, uh, I'm not going to be able to say it. It's uh, Cassius. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got it. Ca- is it Cassius or Cassius? It's Cassius. <laughs> Let's get this over with. You got it. You got it. Feeling tipsy yet? Catch more of Andrew Rogers from 7 to 9 in the morning on Hale Varsity Radio.